show where you don't have to build your business alone with our daily 10-minute business lessons for the real world. I'm your host, your coach, your teacher, Omar Zenholm. I'm also the co-founder of The $100 MBA, a complete business training and community online. And today is part one of our part two lesson on how to write an effective blog post. Blogging or writing great articles on your website can create a lot of traffic for your business. But writing is not always easy. It's a lot of work. So you want to make sure that it's worth the time that you're putting into. So in this two-part lesson, I'm going to talk about six rules you need to follow if you want to write effective blog posts, blog posts that can really generate incredible amount of buzz and can really help you grow your audience. These are six things you need to do every time you're about to write a blog post. Even if it's your first blog post, these six rules apply. I personally use them on every blog post we write at the $100 MBA. So let's jump right into it. Let's get down to business. What does it mean to write an effective blog post? Well, to me, an effective blog post has to have an effect on other people. It needs to move people. It needs to create the impression where people feel like, wow, this post really has helped me. And in the world we live in with social media, the likelihood of people sharing a post like that is much higher than a post that was, huh, was pretty good. So every time you write a blog post, you should have this goal in mind, this goal that you want to create a post that's so epic that people are like, wow, I got to share this with other people because it's so great. People do this. People share funny videos or interesting articles because they want to be a part of something powerful. So make your blog post that powerful thing. And in this two-part lesson, today and tomorrow, I'm going to tell you exactly what are the things you need to focus on to make sure you have a powerful blog post on your hands. So like I said, there are six rules that I follow. I'm going to give you the first three today and the last three in tomorrow's episode. So let's jump right into it. The first rule, and it's the first one for a reason, is an absolute deal breaker. If you do not have this, there's no reason for anybody to read this post. And the rule is, write about something people want to know about. I know that sounds obvious, but you really need to spend some time understanding your audience and write things that they would like to know about. Sometimes people use blogs to just write about things that are bothering them to rant. Maybe that's okay. But if you want an epic blog post, something that's really being shared and people really love it, then you need to really, really write about something that people want to know about. People are dying to know and you want to be able to help them out with that in that blog post. Let me give you an example. I wrote a blog post for Digital Photography School. Now, this is a huge website that gets millions and millions of visitors a day. But that blog post was shared over 10,000 times on social media. I got 10,000 shares on one blog post. And I believe the reason why it was shared so much is because of this first rule. I wrote about something that people want to know about. When I say people, it's the audience I'm writing for. And the audience I was writing for were for photographers that possibly would want to go pro with their skills. So I wrote a blog post that was titled The Ultimate Guide to Going Pro as a Photographer. And it was a huge post. It was like 3,000 words. And I go through exactly what they need to do to get started and start becoming a professional photographer. Now, I'm a business guy. I'm not a photographer, but I do know the business of photography. So I was able to help him in that way. But the point is, is that I wrote about something that audience wants to know. They want to know, hey, I have this skill of photography. How do I monetize this? How do I get clients? How do I create a portfolio? How do I get testimonials? I wrote about those things because there's nothing worse than writing a huge article and then realizing, oh, no one really cares about that stuff. So rule number one is write about something people want to know about. When I say people, again, it's the audience you're writing for. All right, rule number two, give them valuable information and they'll love you for life. Give them something they can chew on, something they can use. Even if some of that stuff is meta, like it's just rhetorical questions to get them thinking about something. Even if it's planning advice, how to plan for something. It doesn't have to be an actual action step, but it has to be valuable. It has to be something that's useful. I read a lot of blog posts, and a lot of blogs, when you read their blogs, they prance around the subject way too much. They don't get really down to it. They don't talk about exactly what somebody should be doing or what they should be thinking about. It's like the whole article is an introduction. Do not do this. Make sure you're giving your audience something of value so they feel like they didn't waste their time after reading your article. Again, if you give them something of value, something that's useful, they're going to want to share it on Twitter, on Facebook. They might email it to somebody. They might talk about it over dinner. They might mention it on their own blog. 
So make sure when you're writing your blog post to look, go through it and say, hey, is this something that people can use, something that's actual information that they can really feel like it's beneficial? All right, so number one is write about something that your audience really wants to know about. Figure out what people are struggling with. Figure out what people are dying to know and write about that. And then rule number two, make sure that when you deliver that article that you give valuable information. It could be actionable items. It could be thought-provoking questions. It could be planning questions. It could be a new perspective on things, but it has to be valuable. All right, rule number three. And this is probably the hardest rule to pull off, but it gets easier over time. And I call this rule, write your bestseller one post at a time. And what do I mean by that? I mean, having the intention every time you start writing a blog post is as if you're actually writing a book that needs to be a bestseller. Like you're a bestselling author and you need to write a great book. So break it down into blog posts. Now this is all about the quality of your work. Sometimes we feel like, oh, we just gotta write a blog post to get it out because it's on the publishing schedule. No, you need to make sure that everything that comes out on your business website is high quality. So make sure you allot the proper amount of time you need to write your blog posts. Have that mentality where you're writing your bestseller, your best work every time you approach your keyboard and start writing your blog posts. Every time I write a blog post, I try to up the ante. I try to do better than I did last time. Even if my last post was really popular and people really loved it and it was shared, I wanna be able to you know, do that again on a higher level because the best blogs and the best writers are the ones that can do it consistently. If you can consistently publish really great posts, you're gonna to start to be seen as somebody who's credible, a great communicator, somebody that really knows what they're talking about, an authority in your field. So every time you approach it, if you approach it with this mentality of I'm writing a bestseller, I'm writing a great, great book, it's just one post at a time. All right, guys, that was part one of our two-part lesson of how to write an effective blog post. The first three rules are write about something you know your audience wants to know about. Two, give them an immense amount of value. Make sure it's valuable information that people really, really would love to hear and find useful. And number three, write your bestseller one post at a time. Approach it as you're trying to create the best post that you've ever written before every time you write. Remember that we're going to continue with this two-part lesson with part two tomorrow where we continue to give you the other three rules that you must follow every time you write a blog post to make sure it's epic. Guys, thank you for listening to The $100 MBA Show. Nicole and I are really happy to have you. Thank you for subscribing to the show, being great fans of the show. If you want to show your support even more, you can leave us an iTunes rating and a review. And remember, everybody who gives us an iTunes rating and a review enters our weekly draw to win a free ride, a free lifetime membership to The $100 MBA Training and Community. Every Friday, somebody wins. We call it Free Ride Friday. It's a lot of fun. So drop us an iTunes rating and review. And plus, by giving us a review, you really help us get more exposure and help be exposed to other entrepreneurs just like you. Here's a great review from Emily. Emily says, business truth nuggets, five stars. Short, to the point, useful truth nuggets about business. Keep them coming. Thank you so much, Emily, for your review. And thank you for listening to The $100 MBA Show. Guys, I want to leave you with this. Writing is one of those things that just takes time. It takes time to be really good at it. I don't really consider myself a great writer yet. I think I'm pretty decent, but I want to become a great one. And it just takes time and a lot of practice. And the more you write, the better you're going to get, the more comfortable you are with your own voice. And we'll talk about that in tomorrow's lesson, a little spoiler alert there. But the point is, is that don't be so hard on yourself at the start. The point is just keep doing your best. As long as you're putting out the best work you can, every single time you write a blog post, then you're on the right track. Just keep on producing great work consistently and you'll find yourself getting better over time. Sometimes I read some old blog posts that I wrote like four or five years ago and I really cringe. It's like, wow, I can't believe I wrote that. But it got me where I am today. It got me to a point where I feel a little bit more confident about my writing. I know exactly my style of writing and I know exactly how to write something effective. So make sure you allow your mind to understand that this takes time. Don't be overly anxious to be this prolific writer from day one. This takes time. Just keep moving forward, keep writing, stick to a publishing schedule, and you'll get there. All right, guys, I'll check you in part two in tomorrow's episode. I'll see you then. Take care.